Hello everyone, in this video we'll be solving a geometry puzzle. If you like this video, hit the thumbs up button, also comment and subscribe, and let's get started. So a quarter circle and one of the diagonals of a unit square intersect inside the square forming four regions. Two circles are inscribed in two of the regions as shown. Find the radii of the circles. So we're going to find the radii of the circles, but first we need to make some connections. All right, cool. Let's start with the larger circle. So I'll go ahead and start here at the center of my quarter circle, and I'll connect that to the center of the circle, the bigger one, all right? And as you know, if you're dealing with geometry puzzles such as this one, it's important to connect the two centers. Okay, that's gonna give us a lot of good information. So let me go ahead and draw the segment that goes through the center here. So this is the center of my larger circle. Let's call the radius of the circle A, all right? Cool. Now I'll drop a perpendicular here because that's also gonna be my radius, A. Now, here's the critical part. We know that the radius is perpendicular to the tangent line because that is a tangent line. And now, what do we know? Well, since the radius of the quarter circle is one, how do we know that? Well, this is a unit square and the quarter circle is actually um, inscribed in that square. Therefore, its radius is supposed to be one. So from this point to that point, as well as from this point to this point. Okay, great. So since the radius of the quarter circle is one, and I took out an A, this piece right here should be one minus A. Great, okay. Now we got a quadratic equation here. How? By using the Pythagorean theorem. What is that supposed to mean? Well, it means that we can find this length in terms of a. Let's go ahead and find it. How do we find it? Let's call that x. Makes sense, right? I mean, it's x anyways. So, let's see how this goes. I'm going to write the Pythagorean theorem, so it's going to look like x squared plus a squared equals 1 minus a quantity squared. Okay, cool. Let's simplify this x squared plus a squared is equal to 1 minus 2a plus a squared. a squared cancels out, leaving us with this. And if you square root both sides, obviously, you're going to get x equals the square root of 1 minus 2a. Okay. Of course, this is supposed to be a positive quantity because x is the length. And so we're not considering the negative square root. Okay, great. So we were able to find x in terms of a, but how is that going to help us, right? That's one something to think about. Well, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to make another connection here. Let's go ahead and connect the center to this. Obviously, that's also going to be a 90 degree angle, right? And what do we know about two tangents that are drawn to a circle from outside? Well, this is also A. We know that these two segments are going to be congruent, right? Okay, since this is X, this is also X. Uh, well, not only that, we also know that this is going to be an angular bisector. But since this is the diagonal of the unit square, the angle is pi over 4 in terms of radius, right? Or 45 degrees, whatever. Well, then we have to think about half of that angle because we're talking about an angular bisector here. Therefore, this half of ang uh, angle pi over 4 is going to be pi over 8. So now, how do we associate that with the lengths, here's where we use trigonometry. Okay, great. And remember yesterday, we had a trigonometric equation, all right? All right? So we're gonna use trigonometry again. How do we use that? Well, I can go ahead and write down tangent pi over eight is equal to a over x. But we were able to express x in terms of a, so I can just write it in a better way, write it as, you know, a over, the square root of 1 minus 2a. Okay, and, well, this is an expression in a, so a is unknown, but I do know tangent pi over 8, okay? Well, I don't know by heart. Well, I actually do. Never mind. It's square root of 2 minus 1. But how do you find it, right? I mean, that's the critical part. So here's how we're going to do it. And this is a really cool method. I'm going to draw a isosceles right triangle. So this angle is going to be pi over 4, and this is going to be pi over 4. Therefore, it's going to be something like 1, 1, root 2. 
Then I'm going to take this length here, the base. I'm going to extend it root 2 units. What is that going to give me? It is going to give me an isosceles triangle, which is cool, right? This is isosceles. Well, what do you know about an isosceles right triangle? The base angles are congruent. And since their sum from exterior angle theorem is pi over 4, this angle needs to be pi over 8. Therefore, tangent pi over 8 is going to be 1 over root 2 plus 1. So let's go ahead and write that down. Tangent pi over 8 is equal to 1 over root 2 plus 1. And if you rationalize the denominator, you're going to get root 2 minus 1. Or you already memorized it, or you can use the double angle formula, whatever. Whatever you do, you can definitely find tangent pi over 8 numerically, and it's equal to root 2 minus 1. Great. Now, we're going to use that along with this equation. Let's put it together. And we're going to be getting something like a over the square root of 1 minus 2a is equal to root 2 minus 1. And of course, if you go out and take this equation, square both sides, then we should be getting something nicer. It's going to look like this. a squared over 1 minus 2a is equal to if you square root 2 minus 1, you know from a minus b quantity squared, you're going to get a squared minus 2ab plus b squared, which is going to give you 3 minus 2 root 2. And if you go ahead and distribute this, you're going to be getting something like a squared is equal to, if you distribute the 3 minus 2 root 2 over that, multiply by 1, you're going to get the same thing. Multiply by 2a, should be getting something like 6 minus 4 root 2 multiplied by a. Okay, great. And if you put everything on the same side, you'll be getting your full quadratic. It's going to look like this. And then bring the 3 minus 2 root 2 over, and that should be plus 2 root 2 minus 3. Okay, great. And this is equal to 0. So we're solving for a, and of course, 2 root 2 minus 3, as you know, is going to be a positive quantity, so we have two positive solutions here. But here's the critical part. Only one of the solutions is going to work for A because there are some certain restrictions. A needs to be less than, you know, certain numbers, so on and so forth. But I'll spare you the trouble because we're also going to find the other radius. So let me go ahead and give it to you for free. Okay? So the radius of the larger circle is then, if you solve this quadratic, and it's, it's easy, it can be done, is going to be negative 3. And you're going to be surprised at this answer because it's such a nice quadratic. I mean, did I say quadratic? I was supposed to say radical. Okay, yeah, the answer is going to be a real nice radical. It's going to be negative 3 plus 2 root 2 plus the square root of 20 minus 14 root 2. Awesome. Isn't that nice? Don't you love this? Uh, I was going to say quadratic again. Don't you love this radical? It is radical. Okay, cool. Now, let's go ahead and find the other radius which I guess I can call B. All right, cool. So let's go ahead and make more connections. But in order to make it less confusing, let me go ahead and clean up a little bit here. Bear with me while I do. And then I'm going to go ahead and find the other radius. Okay, cool. Now, what do I need to do here? I need to make more connections, of course. How do we make them? Just like normal, you know, start at the center, obviously and then go to the other center. So this is our center first. And uh, this is this basically the center of the quarter circle, which is the large one, right? And I'm going to go ahead and connect it to the center of the smaller circle. Okay. And let's call that radius B so that I can just work off of uh, that, you know, connection. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and connect it here, but I'm not going to go through I'm not going to go all the way because if I continue, it's not really going to give me anything nice or helpful, but this is good enough. So now let's go ahead and make this connection as well. And this is a perpendicular segment here. Let's call this radius B. Great. Now, of course, I need to make more connections. Just bear with me. This is going to take a while, but you'll be surprised at the answer. And when we're done, we're going to compare those two radii because it's going to be fun. Okay, cool. Now let's go ahead and connect it here. As you know, we're going to be using the same type of ideas here, of course, but this one is a little bit more challenging than the other one. All right, cool. So now this is also going to be B. As you know, we have a, you know, uh, what's it called? Um, an angular bisector here. But guess what? This time 
I can use it, but I will use something else. Isn't that more fun like when you do it differently? Yeah, that's what I'm gonna do. So let's see how this goes. Let's go ahead and connect the, um, let's see how that goes, uh, about this much maybe, right, for B. Let me go ahead and make another connection here. So like B units this way, and then I'll be making, do I need to make another connection? I don't think so. Okay, cool. Now, how do we do? Well, that's a B, so this is going to be one minus B. So this is real nice because I do know something here. What do I know? Well, I do know that this is B and this is one. So I do have a right triangle whose hypotenuse is B plus one and whose height is one minus B. And from there, I can basically find the base. Okay, so the base is gonna be from Pythagorean theorem. Remember, we had an identity, right? One plus B quantity squared minus one minus B quantity squared is always for AB. Remember, we talked about this before, but A is one, so it's just gonna be four B here, right? So it's four B. If you square root that, basically, you're gonna get two root B. So this length here is two root B, this one, okay? But this one is also two root B because they are the same from this point to that point. Great. And since the side length for the unit square is one, this piece is going to be one minus two root B. Great. Now, I found the base of another right triangle, uh, which is the smaller one right here. Let me shade it a little bit so you can see. And then I know the height is B. So from the Pythagorean theorem, basically, I'm able to find the hypotenuse, right? And that hypotenuse is going to equal uh, something. But we can also proceed this way, and I'll, I'd like to do it that way. So let me go ahead and call this piece here D, kind of referring to the diagonal. It's not the whole diagonal, but at least part of it. And you know that this piece is also going to be one minus two root B, right? From this point to that point. Okay, great. Now, the whole diagonal, the whole diagonal is equal to what? Well, it's a unit square, so the whole diagonal is going to be root two, right? I know that. It's root two. So how do I write it as an expression or equation though, right? So it means that I need to find D because I know that, I know that D plus, D plus one minus two root B is equal to root two, right? Because it's the whole diagonal, remember? From this point to that point. Great, so how do I find D? Well, if you use this skinny, tiny right triangle here, and use the Pythagorean theorem, you can actually find D. Why? Because notice that D squared plus B squared is equal to B plus one quantity squared because that's the hypotenuse basically. And from here, you're gonna be getting D squared is equal to two B plus one, two B or not two B. Sorry, I have to make that joke every time it comes up, but from here to keep a long story short, D is going to be the square root of two B plus one. Great, now I was able to find D in terms of B, and B is the radius I'm looking for. So now I can add these together. So basically I do have two equations, right? One of them is this one, and the other one is this one. And if you put these two together, you're gonna be able to find B from here. So let's proceed. Of course, we need to do some cleaning here. Allow me to do that. Tangent pi over eight, fun stuff. We already talked about that, right? Okay, now, what I'd like to do is, I'd like to put these two together and then solve for B. So I'm gonna replace D with the square root of two B plus one here. So this is where I come from. Plus one minus two root B is equal to root two. Now, this is, an, uh, this is a radical equation that gives us B, but, we can solve it by, you know, squaring both sides and then dealing with the radical and square one more si uh, one more time and so on and so forth. But again, I'll spare you the trouble. Allow me to do that. And if you solve this equation, which you can do, it's easy. B is going to equal five minus three root two minus two times the square root of 10 minus seven root two. Isn't that another awesome radical? This time I didn't say quadratic, right? I said radical. Great, now, what we're gonna do next is we're actually going to put these two together and I'd like to talk about some 
interesting facts. Let me go ahead and find the other radius. Where is my other radius? Let me go ahead and frame that as well with a nice color, like maybe this one, all right? And what I'd like to do is, I'd like to take that, all right? I'd like to take this and, you know, uh, kind of put it together. So, well, I guess I can just copy the B value here instead of just going back and forth with the copying and pasting. But while the value of B is basically five minus three root two minus two times the quantity. Now, I want you to pay attention to something here as I write this, okay, ready? I hope you get to see that. And you can kind of think about why that's happening. I, I haven't thought about it yet, actually, but it's going to be an interesting fact. So have you noticed that? I hope you did. Well, look at the expressions inside the radicals. We have 10 minus 7 root 2 and 20 minus 14 root 2. You get the idea? Hopefully you did. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. And this brought us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. I'll see you tomorrow with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.